Whether you are a new grad engineer, or you're looking to switch careers and becoming a front-end engineer, or you may even be a principal engineer, regardless, you must know what to expect during a front-end interview process. One mistake, and you can ultimately jeopardize your chances of landing a dream job. Don't worry though, I got you covered. Hi everyone, my name is Shivam. I've been a software engineer for over 10 years. I'm also the founder of Funnily.com, which is an all-in-one platform to help you prepare and ace your next front-end interview. In this video, I will provide everything you need to know about what to expect during the front-end interview process, what each stage is like, and also give you tips and advice along the way. We will cover the front-end interview process at a high level regardless of your seniority level. I will walk you through each stage of the interview process, including what to expect, mistakes to avoid, tips to do well, and how you can practice them today. This video will cover the six most commonly seen stages during front-end interviews. The first stage is usually the recruiter round. The next could be a take-home test, depending on the company. Usually smaller companies do take-home tests. The next could be a technical phone screen. Then finally, usually it's your on-site round, which usually consists of around four to five interviews. And lastly, the offer stage. Before we dive into each individual stage of the front-end interview process, I wanna talk about how front-end interviews can vary depending on the company, the size, the industry, location, and other several factors. For example, if you're not interviewing in the tech industry, rather, let's say you're interviewing in fashion or perhaps like the entertainment industry, it might not be a typical interview process you'll expect. In those kind of cases, you might expect to see some things such as building a small game. They might actually ask you really domain specific questions to test your skill set rather than more generically code style questions. And sometimes at those smaller companies, if you're fortunate, you might get asked to just show your portfolio and perhaps not even get asked any technical questions, instead just verbal questions, although that is a bit more rare and unlikely to happen, but it has happened to me in the past personally. For the context of this video, I'll probably focus on two main segments. I'll be focusing on top tech companies like Fang Plus companies, and I'll also be talking about smaller companies like startups. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, take a moment to subscribe and smash that like button so I can keep creating more valuable content like this. Now let's begin. So now let's focus on the most common front-end interview process at top tech companies, which usually starts off with the recruiter round. The primary purpose of the recruiter round is for you to introduce yourself and also learn more about the company and the role that you're interviewing for. The recruiter will introduce themselves to you and the company and also talk a little bit about what the role entails and what the expectations are. You'll be then asked to introduce yourself and sometimes the recruiter may even ask the candidates some front-end trivia questions. I created a video recently about what kind of trivia questions to expect, so check that video out. It'll be linked somewhere on the screen above. Some tips for this round. First and foremost, come prepared with why you're excited to work for the company you're interviewing at. Don't just come there unprepared. Recruiters will see that in a nutshell and you'll most likely get a rejection after the interview is over. So just prepare yourself well, figure out what the company does and why you might be excited to work there and really show that. Next, you really want to highlight your past experiences or projects that you've worked on that also aligns with what that company is looking for for that particular role. Avoid fluffing your resume or lying about your achievements. This can be very clearly visible during the later interview stages. Honesty is always the best policy. Arguably the best investor in the world, Warren Buffett, he famously once said that the main three traits that he looks for when hiring someone is intelligence, integrity, and energy. Make sure you have all three. Once you pass the initial technical recruiter screen, you'll be likely given a take home assessment or move on to a technical phone screen. Generally speaking, most small companies will ask you to do a take home. Larger companies will move you on to a technical phone screen. Let's quickly talk about the take home test. The take home test will ask you to build a feature in a predetermined amount of time. Sometimes in vanilla JS, other times in a framework like React. Some examples of take home assignments may ask you to build a photo gallery by fetching some data from some kind of API and then rendering it on the screen. Other examples, they might ask you to build a blackjack game or maybe snake game or something else. I plan to make a more comprehensive video detailing how to ace front end take home tests, so stay tuned for that. Now, if you're interviewing at larger companies, you'll most likely be moving on to a technical phone screen instead of a take home. So let's explore what to expect there. So, in my experience, this may be one of the most challenging stages because you have literally one chance to impress the interviewee. Failure to do so means you won't proceed with the other rounds. Depending on the company, you will only have about 45 minutes to an hour to solve a coding challenge. The challenge will be generally geared towards front-end related questions, but it's not abnormal to see a strict leak code style question. This round is usually done via HackerRank or online code editor service. During this round, you can expect questions like, build a throttle in JavaScript, build JavaScript methods like .map, .filter, and .reduce fix a bug in some kind of code, or you might be asked a classic computer science question like reversing a linked list. For a full list of questions that are generally asked during 
phone screen interviews at frontend interviews, check out frontendlead.com and click on the coding problems tab to see a full list of questions you can expect to see there. If you happen to pass the phone screen, then congrats to you, you're officially moving on to the on-site. The on-site stage usually has around four to five rounds, depending on your seniority level. For mid to junior candidates, expect four out of five rounds to be coding rounds. For senior candidates, expect three rounds of coding and one round of system design. And for staff plus principal level engineers, expect about two rounds to be system design rounds and two rounds to be coding rounds. And generally speaking, companies tend to have one of the coding rounds to be an app design round, where you might build a small UI app, such as building a photo gallery or building a clock or building a tic-tac-toe app. The other coding rounds are similar to the phone screen, as where you're expected to solve some kind of algorithmic front-end focused problem. You can expect to see problems such as building utility functions that exist in JavaScript from scratch, or you can be asked to build a promise from scratch, or take some JSON data, filter it, sort the data, and output a new result. You can find the most commonly asked JavaScript interview questions by navigating to frontendly.com, clicking on the coding problems tab, and solving problems directly within the platform using the built-in code editor. If you get stuck, not a problem, click on the solutions tab to find the solution with an article explaining how to solve the problem. If you're still stuck, don't worry, you can watch our comprehensive video guide for most of the problems to help you learn them as well. Now, regardless of your years of experience, you're gonna have at least one hiring manager around. Be prepared to think of examples in your past where you've encountered difficult situations at work. Think critically and honestly about how you've handled those situations. For example, one question you could be asked is, when was the last time that you had to deliver hard feedback to someone else? Or when was the last time you yourself received difficult feedback? How did you handle that? One huge tip for behavior interviews is to utilize the STAR behavioral questions pattern to solve these kind of questions. Whereas S stands for situation, where you describe the context in which you performed a task. T stands for task, where you explain the actual task at hand or what was involved. Then A stands for action, where you detail the specific actions you took to address that task. And finally, R stands for result, Share the outcomes of your actions and highlight the importance of your work. On frontendlead.com, you can find a full list of the top behavioral questions to expect by visiting our behavioral questions tab, exploring each question, and determining how to phrase your answer. For the most part, that will cover the on-site. If you made it this far and you happen to receive an offer, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back and grab a drink to celebrate. Now let's move on to the last portion of the front end interview process, which is the offer stage. One big tip to provide to you during your offer call is to try to line up your actual calls themselves around the same time. This way you can use each offer that you receive as leverage for other offers and use them to compete with each other to get the highest possible offer. You also wanna decide on a salary that you'd be happy with before your offer conversation occurs. So take a look at levels.fyi for recent offers for that level and company that you're actually interviewing for. Pro tip, when you're looking at offers on levels.fyi, make sure the offer that you're looking at lists that they've worked at that company for zero years. That means they're a new hire. As you might not get an accurate representation of salary if you view someone who has worked at a company for more than a few years, as they will receive refreshers and also raises. Another tip here is don't be the first person to give a number out. Allow the recruiter to provide you with their numbers and negotiate. Don't hesitate to negotiate even if you don't have a competing offer. If their offer sounds reasonable, ask for five to 15% more. The worst they can say is no, but they won't reject you for negotiating. They spent weeks, if not months, trying to find this candidate and also have spent thousands, if not millions of dollars trying to fill this role. Between paying their own employees to interview candidates to the advertising costs that they occurred, they will not let you go that easily. Lastly, once you feel comfortable with the number, don't agree to anything on the phone. Get it in writing and speak with them via email. You want to use these numbers as leverage against each other. Finally, once you feel like you're satisfied with your offer, accept it and enjoy. So that will wrap up the overall interview process at big tech companies and startups. Although this video has covered the overall interview process, it did not really give you all the tools that you need to actually prepare for the interview itself. So if you're curious about that, I made a video about that recently. It'll be somewhere on the screen above. If you found this video helpful, consider pressing the like button and subscribing. I'll see you next time. Peace.